الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وآله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهداه أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Hadith number 261 was narrated by Abdullah ibn Umar ibn Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him and with his father. He said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam forbade, and I'll quote the Arabic word because there isn't anything in English similar to it. Al-Muzabanah, meaning to sell ungathered ripe dates of one's garden, of one's farm, for measured dried dates, or fresh grapes for measured dried grapes, or standing crops for measured quantity of foodstuff. He forbade all such bargains. Now let us understand the word muzabana. A zabn is to push, a struggle, and as you've heard, there are three types that the Prophet mentioned, One is dates, fresh, with dried. Two, grapes with raisin. Three, grain, or actually the actual standing crops in the ears or in the spikes itself when it's still there, with grain whether it's sweet or anything else, after being harvested and processed. So the Prophet ﷺ is forbidding such sale. Any reason, do you think? What do you think? Yes. Standing crop can uh, get spoiled by some disease, for example, or the same can apply to uh, trees with fruits. No, this is not the reason. Yes. Because this involves riba. Because this is called riba. But why? Any specific reason, Abdul Rahman? Uh, my take on this is that because the fruits are ripe uh, and when they dry, you don't know what quantity you may end up with. And because of that, it is not allowed. Very good. This is the right answer. The answer of the young brother is also correct because there is a number of things that the Prophet ﷺ indicated to us. We will study this, inshallah, in the following series that are considered to be riba. What is meant by riba? Usury. And the Prophet gave us six types that we can consider them to be the headlines and there will be a subheading falling under them. And among the things that he called alayhi salatu salam to gold and silver, and then he said wheat, barley, dates, and salt. These are the six types. So now we're talking about dates. So the Prophet forbade alayhi salatu salam the sale of muzabana. What is the sale of muzabana? I come and look at your farm, with palm trees, nice ripe dates, fresh. We call it in, in Arabic rutab, different than tamr. Tamr is the dry one. Rutab means ripe. So I come and say to you, Akhi, this beautiful crops of yours, I will give you what a person who's expert in estimating. And this person expert in estimating the weight or the size is known kharis. And the khars is to estimate, to doubt. And his job, he's one of the people that the ruler sends off to collect zakah. You know that there is zakat in cattle, and there are also zakat from the crops that come out of the land, especially, not all of them, fruits, vegetables, there is no zakat in that. But we're talking about dates, about grapes, and about things that can be turned into dry grains, such as wheat, barley, corn, beans, etc. So what does this kharis, or this man who estimates, do? He goes to a farm. Assalamu alaikum, alaikum salam. Big farm, mashallah. I would like to take the zakat of it. He said, we did not harvest it yet. So he estimates. It's not time of harvesting, maybe. Maybe it's going to be later on. He estimates. He says, ah, I see that what you have here 
is equivalent to 2,000 tons. So the zakat is so-and-so. Okay, he's an expert. He knows what would be the quantity approximately, give or take. Now, in buying and selling, this is not permissible. Because in riba, you have to avoid being different. So I cannot give you 10 grams of gold for 9.99 grams of gold. 0 0.001 is different. Nope, this is haram. It has to be exact. So when you say that I'll give you 500 tons for whatever you have, and you say, I agree, the Prophet says, I some no. In another hadith, the Prophet was brought with good dates. And who brought it? Bilal. So the Prophet said, Bilal, where did you get this grape from? I don't remember that we're having this in our home. He said, oh, Prophet of Allah, we had two sa' of bad dates. So I went to the market and I bought one good sa' with these two. What did the Prophet say? He says, oh my God, oh, this is exactly what riba is. Then what should I have done, O Prophet of Allah? You should have sold the two sa' collected the money, and then afterwards you have the choice to buy a better sa' from him or from someone else. So the Prophet is telling us when they asked him, okay, why is such a transaction forbidden? The Prophet told them in a different hadith that the ripe dates, when it dries and becomes ripe dates, will it lose weight? And they said, yes. And said, so then this is not permissible because it's different. It has to be exactly identical. And we will go into detail, inshallah, when we study the hadiths related to riba. So first of all, dates, ripe and dry. Second of all, the Prophet said, Islam, grapes that are turned into raisin, zabib. So this is also difference of being unable to actually and specifically state the weight. And if you cannot state the weight, then the transaction is void. It goes into ambiguity and it goes also into riba. The last and third type is we're talking about standing crops, such as wheat, such as barley, while they are in their ears or in their spikes. You cannot buy these with grain, with foodstuff, until you harvest it and turn it into that, and then you can sell that. And we will come to mention this, inshallah, in the field of riba. Imam Malik, may Allah have mercy on his soul, Malik ibn Anas, the Imam of Medina, he used to say that muzabana is any type of transaction that you do not have equal weight or size or specific measurements of it, whether it is part of the six riba types or not, anything that you're not specific, not knowing the exact weight or size would go, and this seems to be, inshallah, the most authentic opinion. The following hadith, hadith number 262, we will briefly go through it because we've spoken about most of it. Jabir ibn Abdullah, may Allah be pleased with him and with his father, said that the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forbade, now let's hear these new words, forbade al-mukhabarah, al-mukhabarah, al-muhaqalah, this is the second word, al-muhaqalah, and he forbade al-muzabana. We took al-muzabana earlier, so we will not go into this. And the sale of fruits until their condition becomes clear. We went through this as well, until they become red or yellow. And he commanded that commodities should not be sold but for the dinar and dirham, except in case of al-araya. Now, all of this needs a lot of explanation. 
But we will not go into details because Al-Araya, we will have a separate chapter for it. Now, what is Al-Mukhabarah? Islam forbids aggression. It forbids injustice. So if I have a land and you come and you would like to cultivate it, and I will say, okay, I agree, but give me a percentage of the crops as a rent. So we're partners now, huh? You're cultivating, and I am offering my land. There's nothing wrong in that. If I say I will have 25% of the crops, okay? No problem. If I say I have 90% of the crops, no problem? No problem. Because there is agreement. al mukhabara is unlike this. al mukhabara is specifically designating an area and say whatever comes in this area is mine. And the rest is yours. Scholars say that this is haram. Why? There is ambiguity on both of us. Usually, the owner of the land knows where the most productive area is. So usually I would say, listen, the side of the streams or of the river, whatever grows there is mine. And the rest of the land is yours. Now there is ambiguity because after he cultivates it and he uh, plants all the seeds and everything, at the time of the harvest, there is a possibility that only at the side of the rivers and the streams will get crops and the rest is nothing. Now, the man worked for six months for zero? Tough luck. No, this is haram. And it could be the other way around. It could be that he gets in his share that he worked for hard, and maybe he would not work as hard in my share because he knows that this is mine and this is his. He would do everything he wants in his share, in my share, because it's not his, he will neglect. Islam says this is haram. Mukhabara is haram. Make it common in the whole of the land. 20, 80, 30, 70, no problem. The percentage is no problem. But we all share and we all suffer. But having it in a different way, this is not permissible. We have a short break. Stay tuned. And inshallah, we'll be right back. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. So, we've gone through al mukhabara then we have al-muhaqala and al-muhaqala is exactly like al-muzabana what is the difference the difference is al-muhaqala is referring to the standing crops while al-muzabana is referring to dates when they're ripe selling them with dried dates al-muhaqala is the same but it is talking about the standing stuff versus the food stuff whether it's wheat, barley, or whatever. So this is, inshallah, understood. Then the Prophet, والسلام, forbade us from Muzabana. We spoke about Al-Muzabana. And then the Prophet forbade selling the fruit until it's ripe, until it's in good condition to be consumed. And the Prophet, والسلام, forbade that it's to be sold except by dinar and dirham, meaning that you cannot sell dates for dates unless with the conditions that we will come to. And this we will explain later on, insha'Allah, azza wa jal. So we open the floor for questions. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Question is that Muzabana, is it referring to the barter system what we had in earlier days, you know, long back? Barter system, exchange for fruits or wheat, wheat exchange for ragi or rice exchange for wheat, something like that, the barter system. No, the Muzabana is not referring to the system you're talking about where you can exchange food for something else. The issue of exchanging things is ongoing and we're doing it at the moment. Countries are not buying in euros and dollars. We buy food for oil. Other companies sell minerals for wood. So the exchange is there, it's permissible. What's not permissible are the types or the six types that the Prophet mentioned This hadith is referring to these six types. So dates is included. 
Grapes is included under the, the food stuff as well. And grains, wheat and barley. So these types, one for one is forbidden. But if I want to buy, for example, a ton of grapes with three tons of wheat, any problem? No problem. But to buy grapes with raisin or raisin with grapes, this is prohibited because it is part of the riba that we will come to discuss, inshallah, later on. Sheikh, uh, salam alaikum. Salam. My question is more of a clarification. Back at the time of the Prophet, uh, the medium of exchange, as this brother was saying, was dates or wheat or barley or etc. Today, the medium of exchange is money, currency. So having said that, I personally feel that when you look at currency, you have dollars, you have rupees, you have euros, a whole lot of things. So is it permissible or is it, is it right to exchange one dollar for 55 rupees? Having, keeping in mind that the medium of exchange is currency. A dollar is a currency, a rupee is a currency. So how can we exchange one dollar for 55 rupees? So your thoughts on that, please. My thoughts are translated and interpreted into another question to you. Did the Prophet ﷺ and his companions have money? No, thank you very much. What about the dirham and the dinar? What was that? It was currency. They had money. Dirham and the dinar are mentioned in the Quran. They had silver and gold as coins or as means of transaction. So yes, they had money. They used to buy things with dirham and dinar. There are numerous hadiths where the Prophet ﷺ gave money to his companions and he, for example, gave him once a dinar to buy a sheep. And this companion of the Prophet ﷺ was a good businessman. So he went to the market, he bought a sheep for one dinar. Then he met someone, he sold him the sheep for two dinars, kept one and bought another sheep, went to the Prophet ﷺ with his dinar and a sheep. Yani 100%. Prophet, very good. And the Prophet Islam smiled and prayed for him that Allah would bless his bargains. The companion says, we were told that if this companion sold soil and sand, he would make profit because of the dua of the Prophet Islam. Therefore, yes, they had money at the time of the Prophet Islam. As for your question, this will be described, inshallah, when we come to the uh, chapter that deals with riba. Is it permissible to sell currency exchange, money exchange, high or less? We will, inshallah, come to discuss this in details, inshallah. Yes, Ridwan. What do you think about the exchange offer that goes on in the market right now? Like, you know, they sell their old refrigerators in order to replace it with the new one. What do you think about that? This, again, will come in the chapter that deals with riba. What's the ruling on exchanging? my old car with a new car and putting money extra. Is there any problem? I'll give you a better example. What's the ruling on selling my expensive car for two cars? Is this considered to be riba or not? This we will come inshallah to discuss. See, without putting the foundations, we can have questions from here till morning because we do not understand the concept. Once we understand the hadith, the concept, then whenever you want to come, I'll give you an example. When we talk about things that nullify wudu, if we don't know them, the brother will say, oh, uh, excuse me, sir, I have a packet of cigarette. Does this nullify my wudu? I say the things that nullify your wudu is one, two, three, four, five. Okay, Zakallah khair. The other brother says, okay, Sheikh, I was walking, and then I saw a beautiful woman, and I looked at her for about six seconds, and then I said, astaghfirullah. Does this nullify my wudu? Akhi, I said one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, but I did six. I'm talking about the things that nullify wudu, not how many seconds. I said, oh, okay, okay, thank you. Other brother says, so you keep on asking so many questions. But if you know the one, two, three, five, khalas. Anything that comes out, number six, it doesn't affect, it doesn't affect, it doesn't affect. Why? Because we have the ground rules. Likewise, when we come to discuss riba, once you comprehend riba, you understand it, Someone tells you, yeah, this transaction is riba. I said, no, I already understand the concept. It's not part of it. So, your question, brother. Assalamu alaikum. Salam. Question is very simple. Why is the uh, market very unpleasant place to go, according to one hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? 
The Prophet ﷺ told us in a hadith, some people do not consider it to be authentic, and that is, the worst places on earth are the markets. Why? Because as we know, markets, we know this from different hadiths, that the Prophet told us that transactions, ﷺ, transactions are filled with lying, with swearing, with deceit, and that is why you, the people of trade, should give a lot of money for sadaqa, for charity. Why? Because this is inevitable. If you go to the fish market, fish market they sell in auctions usually, huh? they are in fish market, in vegetable market, people who display their goods, I'll sell this lot for so and so, and people bid. You will find a lot of fighting, a lot of swearing. You come to me and say, how much you want to sell your miswak for? Wallahi, I bought it for five rupees. And I did not buy it, I, it was a gift. And the Prophet told us, that some three will be punished severely on the Day of Judgment. Allah will not look at them, Allah would not have mercy on them, Allah would not purify their souls and would punish them severely. Who? One of them, the third one, is the one who sells by swearing. If you swear to me that this is so and so, I will believe you. Because you used Allah's name. So Allah Azza wa will punish them severely for that sin. Therefore, the market to go to is not a pleasant place. They lie. The Prophet went into the market once, alayhi salam, and saw a pile of food. He put his hand inside of it, and he finds wetness. You know, a pile of grain, a pile of wheat. But there is wetness inside. And he said, the owner of this, what is this? And the man said, oh, Prophet of Allah, it rained last night. So I turned it over so that people would not see the rain affecting it. He said, SubhanAllah, why didn't you put it on top? He who cheats us is not from among us. And that is why the markets are an unpleasant place to go to. Nowadays, malls are even worse because you go there, you see women properly dressed, you see boys, you know, flirting with women, and you see lots of things that are un-Islamic. So, we know the hadith, the Prophet says, whoever enters a market and says, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah, lahu al-mulku wa lahu al-hamd, yuhyi wa yumit, wa huwa hayyun la yamut, biyadihi al-khayr wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir, Allah would write for him 1,000, 1,000, meaning a million good deeds. And he raised a million bad deeds. Subhanallah, if you only say this, when you enter the market, but the majority of us enter the market, ah, let's buy, let's do this, let's do that, and forget and neglect saying this hadith. Unfortunately, that this is all the time we have. Until we meet next time, fi amanillah, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.